detoxifying heavy metals, minimizing exposure, all the toxic foods. I love to talk about methylation. You hit on Jill James and her work, and I right. think some folks are interested in that. Let's talk about your experience with using methylation. Yeah, it's interesting. With Jill, she originally looked at this issue for Down syndrome. A mom of a child with Down syndrome came to her, and as it turned out in this family, the sibling had autism, and she found the same basic biochemical dysfunction in terms of the methylation factor, the uh, SAM to SAW ratio, acidental methionine and acidental homocysteine. Um, and that's really she called your methylation factor. The more SAM you have, do you want to fill that in for your listeners? You can do that now sure. or later. Let's go for it. But that's your main methylator. Okay. Um, and that methylation cycle is someone involved that took me 10 years before I <laughs> <laughs> thought I could now that we talk about it, but connected into the methylation cycle is the folate cycle. And again, for me, coming at it from a pure scientist, the exquisite sensitivity and fine tuning of the body, we have probably seven different oxidation states of folic acid in our body. Uh, so there's not one folic, as you know, there's folinic and methylfolate and formal tetrahydromethylfolate and many, many forms of methyl. So these exquisite cycles are fine-tuned and have lasted a long time. But I think that's what we see in autism is that we've reached a threshold of stability. Because what I use for analogy, Mike, is if when humans build things, the more complex they are, the more likely they are to break down. But natural systems are so intertwined and so complex that gives them stability. So natural systems are stable by their incredible interconnectedness and complexity. So when you start to see these breaking down is when we have to be concerned. Sure. But the methylation cycle is such a crucial cycle for epigenetic control, for detoxification, for DNA synthesis, for hormonal transmitter mm -hmm. uh, balancing. Mm -hmm. Again, and these may not, terms may not be familiar to your listeners, but uh, there are some really good websites. Uh, Amy Asko's so she has a parent has written and I refer patients so I can give you that link that it's like 20 pages it goes from the cartoon drawings simplifying it to the more complex yeah so um, that's a crucial factor homocysteine in adults is a good marker for it in kids it's not necessarily true um, let's let's explain that I think it's really important to look at homocysteine because a lot of people look at that and associate homocysteine with cardiovascular risk factors which it did is kind of ambiguous but what I've learned from Joe James is if we have methionine and then we have Sam over here homocysteine being below it's in equilibrium with SA and we know SA is an end product inhibitor of Sam do you want to dive into that and why that is important is because homocysteine then goes to feed glutathione which we've been talking about eliminating all these heavy metals and glutathione is so important so that's why I think methylation is so important, and sometimes doctors don't make that correlation. So, Yes, no, I, I mean, it would be nice if maybe we can get a diagram sure. to refer your listeners to, but the methylation does uh, have a crucial double function with sulfation. So the homocysteine, as you point out, that like hands on the clock, if you will, yeah. if you want to look at the 6 o'clock position, homocysteine is then fed down through cystocyanin beta synthase into the sulfur cycle, where you get not only glutathione, but taurine, another crucial detoxifier. So if that homocysteine is low, then it can't recycle. And then you also get what's called the methyl trap or the folic acid trap, because you do need it. So it's a lot of complicated biochemistry. The, if I understood your question though, the critical aspect of sulfation is also adversely affected by the lack of methylation factors because then you'll compromise that pathway. It's also important uh, for glutathione for viral infections because if you have enough redox potential, which is glutathione and ascorbate, not just glutathione, then viruses can't proliferate. Mm. So there's been a lot of work now with methyl B12 in fatigue, in autism, in depression, in a lot of areas. But the good news is that's one of the I think one of the great advances is the methyl B12, which is the biologically active form. Sure. Um, we, we use a lot of that. We see a lot of good results yeah. with injectable forms of it. Uh, sublinguals can work under the tongue. 
and topicals. But this is a really important point that I emphasize with patients. I and if it's kids with the families, you are the doctor. You know, many, if not all of the parents I see have earned the title doctor, mom, and doctor, dad. That's great. Okay, because they have been there studying and researching up wee hours on the internet. They know their kid better than anybody. So a lot of this is going to be determined by your child's response. We don't have the technology. Mm-hmm. As a Star Trek fan, you remember Dr. McCoy with the body scanner? Yeah. yeah. I want one of those. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make your life easier, huh? Yeah. Actually, I think microRNAs, your listeners, that's, that's, that's the control right. of the DNA. We were kind of, it's ridiculous now, and I would never could buy it, but we called it junk DNA. Mm-hmm. Only 2 to 3% of your DNA codes for proteins. So what's the other 97% doing? And we now know it's the software controlling it. But the microRNAs have that control. And I think that will reach clinical application in about two years. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's... I mean, right now we have the DNA sequence, 23andMe, which can be helpful. Mm-hmm. But what the DNA is doing in terms of the, we call the metabolomics, proteomics, uh, is going to be more helpful. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if I wanted too much from your original question or if you want to bring me no, back that, to that's that. really good. I mean, I think, you know, to wrap this back into methylation, we know that, as you mentioned, CME and methylation is so important for epigenetics or that higher level control of genetic expression. And then, of course, detoxification like you talked about. But since you've seen many children with ADHD, autism and Downs, what have you found to be most effective for supporting methylation? You hit on injectable B12, but... Do we also support the transsulfuration or the glutathione cycle at the same time? Like, what do you find? Well, this is biochemical individuality. I mean, the good news, I will say, for Down syndrome is it's more treatable because some of the abnormalities are pretty well known. I mean, there's a very high percentage of low thyroid that's being missed. A high percentage, depending on the research, it can be up to 80, 90%. Mm-hmm. So, as you know, thyroid is so critical, especially for neural development in utero and early life. Now, do you combine 5-MTHF, B12 together, typically? Yeah, I, I, I wish the science was there. We have to go by the kid's response. In my experience, I would say 80% of the kids do better on methyl B12, and 20% do better on hydroxy B12. So hydroxy is a long-acting storage form, and methyl is a shorter-acting active form. So that's where the parents are become colleagues, and that's how I approach it. I mean, I welcome the questions. I don't mind if someone brings three inches of research because uh, you get better results. Right. I mean, I, I emphasize with my patients, doctors have no special intelligence. We do have training experience, but most of medical thinking is not complex thinking. Actually, the parents will often know more than the physicians in terms of they spend the time researching their child, especially on a chronic condition. We're not trained for that. But you embrace that, whereas other I doctors do. might be like, hey, I'm the doctor. Who are you to tell me what to do? Makes I do. such a great practitioner. I do explain that the MD stands for multidimensional, not minor deity. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's, that's my approach. But uh, And it depends on the individual. They're in a certain place for if people choose they want to just get their blood pressure meds. That, that's fine. I'm not criticizing that. I think it's future medicine to be individualized. Sure.